Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. All right, today I am here with a look at Prophecy. Uh, this is a fantasy adventure, adventure game from Vlada Schwalm. And this game is a lot, or is not like any of his other games. This game is very much a kind of a Meritrash uh, fantasy adventure game, very much in the same kind of um, vein as Roombound or Talisman. So right now on the table, this wide shot here, you're seeing um, the base game of Talisman. Additionally, you are seeing some stuff from the Water Realms expansion and a few things from the Dragon Realm expansion. So here we have the, the main board, which comes with the base game. Then we have this overlay here, which is called Treasure Island. This comes with the Water Realm. And this allows you to go around the world and look for treasure maps and then come here and pick up some interesting, high, powerful items. We have this ability board over here, which is where we keep our different skills and abilities that we can buy when we level up. And we have five different guilds worth of um, abilities. We have the magic tower, the monastery, the forest, uh, or the fortress, the forest camp, and the thieves guild. And then we have our characters. And right now I am playing with a human paladin and an elf, an elf spell blade. So like I said, this game is very much like Talisman or Roombound. Um, one of the differences you can see is that the board, the art on the board is round, so you're kind of like you're traveling a globe. And the spaces are these shape, these colored shapes here represent the different spaces. These blue spaces here, those are like civilization spaces. And then we have these wilderness spaces, which include forests, plains, and mountains. And that's where your random encounters are going to be spawning. You also have like a city and a village. These are places where you can go and you can buy items. And then you also have, finally, you have these astral plane spaces of which there are five. And these are kind of like your bosses. In each astral plane space, you're going to have a lesser guardian, a greater guardian, and an artifact. And what you're trying to do in the game, I usually play this as a soul, as a um, co-op variant. And the co-op rules are in the Dragon Realm expansion. But what you're trying to do in the co-op version is you're trying to kill, in each of the astral planes, you are trying to kill one lesser guardian, one greater guardian, and then collect all five of the artifacts, which are powerful items. So that is the kind of the sequence of the game. One of the main driving forces of Prophecy is this chance deck. This deck kind of dictates where random encounters are going to show up on the map. And this deck also has some very beneficial cards. So one way this is this game is different than Roombound and Talisman is it's a little bit nicer to the player. And so you're going to have a few things in this chance deck. One thing you're going to have is treasure maps. So this is going to tell you where treasure maps appear on the board. Right now I have some treasure maps here in this forest space and here in this plain space. If you collect enough of those treasure maps, you can take a port, you can take a boat trip to Treasure Island, and then you can collect one of the three face-up magical items and then there's also a variety here of magical items that you can also get as you cycle through the different ones that are available. All right, then you also have uh, merchants. So merchants are going to show up at the city here and up here in the village. And those are going to be when you draw one of these merchant cards. That's going to tell you that what kind of items show up. So either rare or common. The rare items will almost always show up here in the city. And you have a pretty large deck of rare items. So these are more powerful items, of course, than the common items. So these are often magical items. 
astral chaos stone, um, a rainbow spear, a radiant scythe, a radiant shield, a time spiral scroll. So you got all kinds of like magical items and spells. And these are just more powerful than the common items, which the common items are going to show up in the village for purchase. And again, you have a very large number of those when you include all the expansions in. And once again, just kind of like more mundane items and weapons, but different kinds of things that you're going to be able to find. Hammers, ivory wands, um, potions of strength, potions of magic, um, a flail, a troll saber so yeah all kinds of different things standard fantasy things lots of fun getting loot and items and armor and all kinds of stuff like that all right then you're also gonna have a card called the prophetic dream which is in this chance deck and when that's drawn you get to reveal one of the cards in order on the astral plane so right now I've gone through the deck almost once and I've drawn one prophetic dream so I chose to reveal this guardian. So you, you reveal the minor guardian first, then when that comes up again, you can reveal the ancient guardian. So that way you can kind of plan your route of attack. You know, if you know that one of these uh, lesser guardians, you have a better chance of conquering it, well then you can say, well, let's focus our attention there. And then in the, um, the main way that the co-op variant works, is that the guardians get stronger. So you begin the game by seeding this stack of tokens here with a number of random numbers that add to the um, combat values and the health values of the guardians. So it makes the guardians stronger so the players have to have a little bit more time. They have to take time to go and get stronger while they're playing in order to defeat the more difficult bosses. And then you also have, so you have a peaceful time, so this is like nothing happens, and you get two consecutive turns this round. There are things called charity, which you get gold and magic and health. And then you have these spaces, which will be ones for forest, ones for mountain, and one for plains. And these are, when you draw these, you spawn adventure cards in every single one of those spaces. So when you draw this, you spawn one adventure card in all of the planes. And you can have up to two adventure cards per space. A third card can be added if it is a treasure map. And the adventure cards is this large stack here which includes all kinds of different encounters. You can have random encounters with NPCs. You can have encounters with monsters. The monsters are gonna have two basic stats, same as the heroes. You're gonna have strength and willpower. Uh, strength is when you're having a battle of strength, a physical combat, you roll a D6 and you add that to the total for both the hero and the monster. And the willpower or magic is what you add when you're having a psychic battle or a battle of, uh, of will. And same thing, you roll the dice, add the totals together, add any other bonuses, whoever has the highest total wins the match. But there are a number of different things you can find here, a strong man, a gem mine, a headless knight. Uh, some enemies, when you defeat them, will allow you to take these rewards here. They often include, uh, you can upgrade your willpower or your strength, or you can get different items. You can get gold, you can get XP. Some uh, monsters will allow you to, if you, if you win, you can decide not to kill them and you wouldn't get the XP, but they would give you some other kind of bonus. And when you lose, if it has this red X, you get the bad effects that happen to you. So there are a bunch of different kinds of things. The variety is pretty good. As you can see, the art isn't fantastic. It does have kind of a low quality charm to it, but especially when compared to the art in something like Talisman 2nd Edition when you have the Gary Chalk art, it is not quite as good. But that's basically what is involved in this chance deck. Things are gonna pop out on the board and then you're gonna have different ways of getting gold and different ways of healing in this chance deck. Nothing is like 
straight up bad from this chance deck. You're never going to draw one of these and have and have your character harmed or anything. Then you also have a little treasure map deck. And whenever you draw a treasure map chance card, you draw one of these. And this tells you where the treasure map appears on the board. You can go there, you can collect it. And then like I said, you can take it here to Treasure Island and you can trade in a number of treasure maps for these powerful items. And right now I'm trying to get three treasure maps because I wanna get this Astral Bronze Stone which allows a, a blacksmith to integrate this into a weapon and give the following effect. When using the weapon in a battle of strength, add two. So it, it's like upgrading your weapons, and that's pretty cool because you don't get a lot of opportunities to actually upgrade your weapons. So with the monsters, there are different kinds, like I said. Some will have battle of wits, though you'll attack magically or psychically. Some will be strength, you'll attack physically. Some you don't have to attack, you can... You can um, just bypass them for certain things. Sometimes you can offer them items or gold and they will leave you alone. Um, sometimes you will, of course, find NPCs, like I said, and there are different kinds here, um, different things. Sometimes you'll offer them items. They will offer to buy items or give you items or uh, give you different effects or anything, something like that. And then another thing you have on the board is, like I said, is each of the five guilds, the Monastery, Fortress, Forest Camp, Thieves Guild, and Magic Tower, each one of those has a small deck of abilities that you can put out on the board. And these are going to be basically the way that you level up your character. And so they're gonna cost a certain number of XP. And depending on your character. So the starting characters, there aren't a lot of differences between them. Basically, you're only looking at their stats might be slightly different. So that guy's like a 5-2 and a 4-4. Four, four. And then they're also going to have two different guilds that they are a part of. And if you visit one of those, so if you're the Wandering Monk and you visit the Monastery or the Thieves Guild, well then you can buy one of the abilities that's on the board for just the XP cost. If you are at the Thieves Guild and you are not a member of the Thieves Guild, then you have to pay XP and an equivalent number of gold. And so there's gonna be different kinds of abilities here. Oftentimes you're gonna have spells, which are gonna cost magic to use. You're gonna have, uh, you can get bonuses when you use different kinds of weapons. Uh, there's gonna be offensive and defensive skills, skills that help you move around the board, skills that help you manipulate different things, different dice rolls and that kind of thing. So one of the ways that this game is a little bit different than uh, Roombound or Talisman is that there is some light resource management in this game and that dictates both the ways that you will interact in combat and the ways that you will actually move around the board and I'm just going to set up an example here so let's say I was playing this monk like this and he starts with four health and four willpower. So health is also your strength. Willpower is your like mental strength and it's also your magic. When you spin tokens, you move them over to the left or when you lose health, you move it to the left and then your strength and your health is now three. So if you had four cubes over here for your strength and health, you would get to add four to your uh, D6 rolls whenever you are doing something that involved physical uh, prowess or strength. But if you get hurt, then your strength goes down and now you're only adding three, and then you're only adding two and so on. And there are different ways on the board and different items that allow you to get your health back. You do heal a lot more in this game because health is used more as a currency than it is in a game like Runebound or Talisman. And that goes with willpower and magic as well. Spells will cost a certain number of magic points to use, and as you spend those, your willpower goes down, but you can get them back in a number of ways and um, use them like that. So you kind of have to think about how you are using these two stats and really 
it's, it's, it's kind of a, you have to find that balance of, okay, so I can move here, I can do this, it's gonna cost me a certain number to cast a spell or to strengthen a weapon, I might get damaged, and then I need to think about how I'm gonna move or where I'm gonna get an item that will allow me to get these resources back. Another resource that you use quite often is gold. And the main way gold is used is in addition to buying items, is actually moving around the map. And this is another way where this game is quite a bit different than Roombound and Talisman because movement is not dictated by uh, rolling dice. It's dictated by spending gold. For free, you can move in any direction one space. So my spell uh, blade here, my elf spell blade, is at the village. So for free, she can move to the plains or to the mountains. And if she chose to move to the mountains, she would have to face this beast here in combat at the end of her turn. However, for one gold, she can spend it and she can move from one port to the next adjacent port. So for one gold, I could hop on a ship and this ship could take me all the way over to the plains here. Then at the plains spot, I would have to face the sold one. And if I defeated him, I would find this treasure map. Additionally, for that, you can also spend two gold to go from one magic gate to another. There are various spots on the board that have these magic gate icons. So if I was in the mountains here, I could spend two gold to teleport all the way over here to this uh, magical wilderness. And then finally, for one gold, I can also rent a horse, which allows me to move two spaces. So for one gold, move two spaces. So I can hire a horse, spin one gold, and move two spaces like that. There are also quite a few items and spells that help with movement. So right now my paladin has a magic carpet, and he can spin magic to move three spaces or six spaces, depending on how much he uses. So as you can see, there's a lot of, you kind of have to think a little bit more about how you're going to be getting around the map in this game. You're not just kind of at the mercy of the dice. You do have to think about the resources that you're going to use, what you need, and when you need it. So like I said, most of the characters are pretty similar. The only difference is there are two guilds that they are a part of, and then they're starting... Um, they're starting stats, the strength and the willpower. They don't have any extra abilities like in Talisman, which one of the great things about Talisman is all the characters and all their wild abilities. But with the Dragon expansion, you also get a set of races that you can use. You can be the elf, the human, the halfling, the dwarf, the troll, or the goblin. Again, bog standard fantasy tropes, but that's fine. I like this kind of stuff. And each one of these is going to give you kind of a different starting ability. Some will be more powerful with magic. Some will be less powerful with strength. Some will be more powerful with strength. Some start with more experience like the humans or the dwarves start with more gold. So there are ways to offset the kind of boring characters using the things from the expansion. So again, I'm playing with a human paladin and an elf spell blade. One variant I use when I play is from BGG, and that is this Mont's Starting Kits for Prophecy. So these are like, uh, these are outfits, these are kits that each one, the target cost was about between nine and 10 gold or and, and or experience. And that gave each of the characters kind of a starting ability and a starting set of weapons or items that helps to make the characters feel a little more thematic. So that's a cool way to start the game. Additionally, I play a quicker variant where um, the way you're normally supposed to start the game is there are no abilities out in the different guilds, but I put one ability out on each guild so that I have a little bit more direction with how I want to uh, power up my character. And it just, it, it makes the game a little quicker because one of the drawbacks of a lot of these kinds of games, 
Runebound Talisman Prophecy is that games can go on for a little too long. So I guess the question is, is does somebody need to own Runebound Talisman and Prophecy? And the honest answer is probably not. If I had to rank the three games, I would rank Talisman 2nd Edition number one, mainly because of the art, nostalgia, and just the huge number of characters when you have all the expansions and just the ways that the game is, can the, the, the variety of the game. Roombound, I would rate second. It's a very strong game. There are a ton of amazing expansions for Roombound and they all add different things and different ways to play the game. And I would rank Prophecy third. I do enjoy the resource management, having to think about how you're going to spend your strength and health and your willpower and magic and how you balance spending those and getting them back, how you use your gold to get around the map, how you spend your XP to level up. I do like that. Um, but the characters really don't feel too different. Some of the art is only okay. Um, some of the NPCs are interesting, but there isn't a lot of memorable things. You're not going to be turned into a frog and have to survive that or make your way through a desert or have some kind of weird game altering effect from one of the expansions in Runebound. So in that sense, I would say that this game is definitely the lesser of those three. However, there are still, I still find myself enjoying it when I want to think more about resource management, I come to Prophecy. So the two expansions also do come with their own boards, but I rarely play with them because I don't find them very attractive and I don't find the gameplay very compelling. The two boards are really just really basic um, square boards. And all you do is, is you put cards on them and the characters move along these tracks on the different uh, cards. So the boards end up just this kind of like jumbled mess of cards and it, really all this all these two expansions do is make the game even longer. So I typically don't play with them. If I am going to play with one, if I'm going to play with these boards, I will only choose one. And it's usually the C board just because I think it it looks nicer. But like I said, there are some other uh, more modular things from the expansions you can use like Treasure Island here that I really like because the items are fun and then the co-op variant and the racial variant from the um, the Dragon Realm. So all in all I, I do like Prophecy even though it's not my favorite adventure game I think it does enough things well it does have some fun it does offer a sense of adventure and I do find myself setting this up about once a year and playing through a game. I tip, I only play it like co-op solo with like two characters. I've actually, I have, I don't believe I've ever actually played this game one competitive, competitively, or two even with other people. Uh, it is a pretty fun little solo adventure game that you can have a lot of fun with. Um, Oh yeah, I did want to go over, so like, let's show you real quick. Uh, these are like the three skills I have right now for my paladin. So you can kind of see how you can level up and, and create your character. So right now my paladin has miraculous healing. It costs one magic point to use and I can heal up to two. I have a blessed weapon, which costs one and allows me to add a plus one to my weapon when fighting with strength. And then I have this prayer, which I can spend one magic point and I can roll 2d6 when I want uh, before any die roll I can spend it and pray and then for that I can roll 2d6 and pick the total that I want so that's pretty nice and then my spell blade right now she's kind of like a you know like a, a magic warrior she has magic drain so it's a spell that costs one and I can make enemies lose their willpower I have a mental attack, which to initiate a battle of wills, it normally costs two magic points, 
but with mental attack, it only costs one. And then she has, she's tough. And so whenever she loses a battle by only one, she can consider it a draw. So that's pretty cool. It's like adding, it's like giving me a bonus on defense. And then she right now has this elven bread, which is kind of like a healing item. And she's fighting with this cutlass. Again, my paladin who has a flying carpet, a large wooden shield, and a rapier right now. I'm really trying to get a different weapon for my paladin because I don't like this, this weapon at all. But yeah, that is, that's prophecy in, in a nutshell. Um, do I recommend it? Yeah, if you're looking for a new kind of adventure game, if you've played a lot of Talisman and Runebound and you're looking for something a little bit different, then yes. Uh, the prices are usually pretty good. You can find the base game and both expansions, usually for less than retail. Uh, the game has not shot up in price at all, even if or when it goes out of print. It's not a highly sought after game and it's not a game that gets a lot of buzz. So I thought I would uh, do it justice or try to do it justice and put some content out there. I know there's not a lot of stuff on YouTube for this game, especially nothing very new because this game is, I think, 2004 or so. It came out and then Z-Man reprinted it a few years later. So, so yeah, Prophecy, a bog standard. Um, action or fantasy adventure game i don't mean bog standard in a derogatory way i just mean it's not really doing anything thematically new but it does offer that really light resource management that gives just a little tiny bit of strategy and tactical decision making on your turn that's you know room bound and talisman do not offer. So all right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.